So like any hobby or passion, mate, you got low-end stuff and you got high-end stuff. For some hobbies, it's plain to see why one would cost more than the other, but drums? Like, they're just tubs you stretch plastic over. How do you enhance that? That's why I love the $150 Cashies Found Jim Bow drums, because these are the worst things I've ever played. I mean, people tell me to get a DXP kit, because, mate, they're way worse. Well, I do have a set of DXPs. I mean, they've come in handy for other reasons, and yeah, it's garbage, but they are still better than the Jim Bowers. Like, the DXP shells aren't special, but they aren't literally falling apart or have this wood cyst. Right, to set the stage, here is a Tom from my professional gigging kit from back in the day, mate, and it's made of birch. You want drums made out of hardwoods like maple, mahogany, oak, birch, because that stiffness turns into the tone and resonance, like softer woods will just eat it up and absorb it. The Jim Bowers are made out of crap. It literally looks like construction plants. Oh, it's not even round! My guess is that it's basswood, which is almost as soft as pine, you know, compared to birch and maple. Basswood can sound good as long as the drum is made well, such as the bearing edge. Like, the bearing edge is the angle that's cut into the wood shell that the drum head stretches over to tighten it. If it's got fluff and pointy bits in it, the head will crease and vibrate weird. Like, on the gym bows, it's a mess. Like, genuine trash. Legitimately the worst I've ever seen. But a big difference between cheap to top end stuff is how the drum is mounted, how you hang it. Like, the Jim Bowers are old school style. Just cut a huge gaping wound in the shell and punch the arm through. On the Masters, you can see it's a rubber mounted cradle to touch it as little as possible. But like, I did do a bit of an upgrade on the gins, mate, to the ISS mounts, and that's genuine aluminium tape. But there's even smaller details. Look at the lugs, like the things that you tighten into. On the Masters, the little bridges, to avoid touching the drum even more. <laughs> the gym bells look like they're from 70s Slingerlands. So like the Masters is 100% a top of the line kit. I've never asked for more. Like even with that ugly badge that's only gotten worse. Sorry Pearl. Like it's still not in the top league. <sighs> the boutique kits. Because like, you really don't need better than virtual maple shells. But like boutique kits, something exotic like Dark Australian Jarrah from a Brady kit, which is way harder than classic hardwoods. Or in the case of the drums I'm hiding in this bag, completely over-engineered. Those who follow my trash family of channels knows that I went to Bendigo Cashies for a Dang Pods video. And the main reason I went there was to grab this, a set of pearl references. Like here in Australia, just the shells, no snare, no stands, no pedals, no no stool, no symbols. It's about $5,000, right? Even use these kits command prices, way above the price that most people will pay for a drum kit. I drove 13 hours round trip to get these because they were the cheapest references for sale in the world that I could find available to me, 2,800 bucks. But here's the thing, I mean, it came with some symbols, right? And these top of the line soft cases, right? Which are 500 bucks on their own. I don't have a set of these. So really at its core, these are a 2,300 Aussie buck, six piece set of references. References. I feel like I've robbed the bank. Like, p please, mate, just sit still just for this bit of boring time. The references are nuts because Pearl has the Masterwork series where you can literally order whatever you want, even the blends of woods. Pearl has made hundreds of custom artist kits and they've taken everything they've learned and they feel they have a recipe that is the ultimate drum. It's debatable. It's still a neato concept, like adding layers of birch to the smaller drums, having maple in the middle ones and mahoganys added to the bigger ones. Even the bearing edges, rounded 45s on the tom, fully rounded on the floor in the kick to make it bigger and fatter. Even the lugs are more complicated, like look at them. And then the tom mount is now polished like a thing of jewelry. You don't need a kit like this, but I, I did get them cheap for a reason. Mate, how did I lose? Well, the evidence is kind of clear. These have been absolutely thrashed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this is epic amounts of coverage. Look, I don't want to poke at people's playing abilities and things, right? We all do it for different things, and drums are a passion. Uh, this is quite clearly an amateur's kind of doing, mate, because, like, every part of the drum has been smashed. So this is my ugly badge, Pearl Masters. You can see I tend to stick to it like the same spot, hey? You know, versus <laughs> this. I don't know if you can see how sunken in that is. Like, that is punched on through to the other side. What kind of amateur can afford pearl references to just absolutely wail upon? I mean, look at these. I mean, that's shown that it's just been plonked onto the concrete or driveways. Such a high-end drum kit owned by an amateur, absolutely thrashed to death, and then dumped at Bendigo Cashies. <laughs> when does this happen? Even the hole in the front's cut funny. 
Oh, that's a bummer because it's its actual reference head. But um, I can prove it to you that this is straight up abuse. <laughs> Got the drum head off. Oh, that mahogany. Like, Jim Bow, eat your heart out. There's a beautiful rounded bearing edge that the references are known for on their floor terms. And uh, yeah, what do you see? Peppered with all these stick marks. Like, ah, uh, like, oh, look at that, man. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Absolutely destroyed. Oh, that color difference is so neat. I love that. So I got one of the toms. Look, you can see she's maple all the way through and a semi-rounded bearing edge, but this one is okay. Actually, just about all of them are okay, except for the 14. Well, luckily for what I've got planned, which is to aim it against my streaming kit, which is, you know, the venerable gin bows, um, all I need is a six inch floor. This guy can sit it out. Yes, you can repair it. Yep, you get the wood filler in there and you sand it back. You know, man, I gotta take some brave pills before I do that, because this is like a $1,500 drum on its own. All right, we're ready to go, mate. I've got the same drum heads on both kits. We're sharing the same snare drum, but just before we hear it, just please know that tuning drums is a philosophy. Some people like to tune to specific notes. You don't have to. Some people like to tune to specific cadences. You don't have to. Drums just need to be a vibe. Listen to the drum intro in Blur's song two and tell me that's the most resonant, pure sound you've ever heard. No, it's a vibe. Buddy Rich and John Bonham's kits at times sound like flat pancakes. It works, it's a vibe. We live in our own pocket in the band. Only once have I been asked to tune to a specific note and it was in an orchestra pit. For modern drums, I like my high tom to pop and I like my floor tom to be this close to a bass drum. The middle toms just need to fit in and not sound like crap when played together with the others. So here you go mate, the Jim Bowles versus the Pearl References. This mo giant mahogany floor tom. Just love that floppy low floor tom sound. And to, to drive the whole thing home, the snare drum all these kits have been using. Oh, it's a Pearl Export snare from the 1980s. Value, about 20 bucks. So it's actually kind of hilarious how close it is. But I mean, it's not the full story. As I said, tuning drums is a philosophy. It's hard to get, like, there's no wrong answers. There's no wrong sound. So like, how do you sound good? And you don't know what a kit can do until you hear it do it. Like lots of experimentation. It's very personal finding a drum sound. The gin bows are a nightmare to tune. Absolutely horrible. Everything is chewy. The terrible shells make the heads pinch and wrinkly, which could cause buzzing and stupid noises. And I had to use all all of my pro experience to get them where they are. The references absolutely sound better. That floor tom tunes so low and does it comfortably thanks to it being a big rounded slab of mahogany. And it wasn't just easier to tune, it felt satisfying to do it. Look, I'm flicking at it. Ah, oh, come on. And these aren't even new, man. These were rescued from Bendigo Cashies. <laughs> yeah. This kit sounds better at different tensions too. It can achieve multiple vibes. You can tune a high pitch for jazz, down low for rock, mate, she'll do it. The Jim Bowles will fight you at every chance it gets. Look, if the Jim Bowles shells were actually round with a proper bearing edge, mate, and decent hardware, the differences actually would be tiny. The wood is only the aftertaste to the drum sound. Bass wood can sound good. It's used heaps. I'm telling you, the sizes are the most important bit. Big drums sound like big drums, small drums 
drums sound like small drums. And this is actually the outcome I hoped for. It means find the cheapest garbage you can. If in doubt, get smaller sizes. But the Pro stuff is a joy to use. Looks beautiful, has more room for sound experimentation, tunes easily, can handle serious abuse. They can also last forever. They're like high-end furniture. Many an antique chair out there doing the round still. And I can totally see why they cost the money they do. It really is an investment for the rest of your life to enjoy them. But when it comes to drums, mate, as long as she's round, there's a good chance it'll sound okay. So a dirty banger kit's waiting for you right now, mate. Hey, save your money for nice cymbals and pedals. That's my tip. You can go now.